Hey everyone, Brian with you from the GameCom. We're continuing our AI only championship series. We are in the last of the second chance round and good news everybody. Uh, the Australian army finally has musket men or at least they're earning nighter. So soon they will be able to back up their nuclear powered submarine uh, fleets with musket men. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. I guess they do have cav. Okay, so if they picked up cav... They are right here. I still don't think they have musket men, though. I don't think they do. Because we have not seen any musket men. Yeah, they still have swordsmen up there. Although that's levied, but still, I'm pretty sure they don't have musket men yet. Where's the digger? Ooh, the diggers don't replace musket men, right? They upgrade, uh, upgrades from musket men. That replaces infantry. Oh. All right. So somehow they just straight skip musket men then. Interesting. Maybe they just didn't have niter? Huh. They also, oh, that's really good. I didn't realize that. So they replace infantry, but they don't cost oil. That is like 10 of 10 then. Seriously. Also, are they replaceable parts? Is that the same as infantry? Uh, infantry, infantry and replaceable parts. Okay. Yeah, that's really good. The fact that they don't cause, uh, require iron or oil because you can actually get it early game. Now, the other question is, I wonder whether or not he even has access to oil. Yeah, he does have some in the water, but I don't know. This map seems like it's going to be a little sketchy when it comes to some of these resources, just because there's so much water in it, which I still like water maps, but man, I just wish the strategic resources were a little more abundant in the game. They can just be a little rare sometimes, and you just get completely screwed out of it. So it looks like Gorgo's maybe going after Hong Kong. I thought Hong Kong got defeated. Yeah, we saw Hong Kong got defeated. Maybe uh, Greece ended up freeing it. It was an emergency. Also, speaking of emergencies... Last session, military emergency failed against Mongolia. Mongolia still got some work to do if they're hoping to catch back up. They are currently at war with Mali again. Um, they are a bit behind right now because they have their cab cores. Uh, but Mongolia has a lot of potential to take some of these and get their own cab back. Potentially, we shall see. Because it's anyone's, right? Mongolia. It's anytime they take a, a unit with a cab, they can... All cab gets plus three and chance to capture defeated enemy cabs. So, yeah. So, ironically, spawning next to Molly is really good because that means they're going to build a lot of cab and they might be able to take the cab. Which is funny. You would think Mongolia, as an agenda, would actually want you to build cab because then they could steal it from you. <laughs> or maybe, maybe it's the exact opposite. If you build cab, that's why they don't like you so they can declare war on you and then take your cab. Although, I didn't see really any spawnage of cab there, so that may be slightly unlucky. Ulm did get conquered by the Barbarians. We were looking for that. It looks like the Barbarians now are going home. Dude, Germany. They had it. They had everything in... Everything was working out so well. Seaside that freaking resorts. Oh my god, dude. They're shooting off rockets, too. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? They just shot off a rocket? Where? No... Well, they didn't shoot off a nuke. I thought that's the rocket sound. Huh, interesting. Still a lot of room over here. He's rolling with the AT crews and the diggers. I'm intrigued to see if he actually ends up declaring war on anyone other than Nubia, or if he actually tries taking this with the melee unit. I mean, he's going to be able to perpetually keep this at zero, like, with these subs. I mean, these subs are just going to absolutely destroy... <laughs> like I said, they're going to absolutely destroy them. Those are planes and bombers. That's what I think that sound is. Does he have? We can't really see that, can we? Yeah, I don't think there's really any way to see planes. Um, does he have oil? Because planes are going to require oil. Uh, John Cutton has oil, so he could theoretically have a plane. We don't see any aerodromes, though. So that's the thing that I'm slightly confused about. Dude, he is loving these canals, man. Also, he has oil right there that he's not built on. India's still managing to get enough towns, I think. Are they still top three? Uh, yeah, he's still in second place. And by a decent amount. Like, Harold's pretty far behind right now. That being said, like I said, I don't, I don't think he's going to be able to keep up. 
Like, he should slowly start falling behind. Ooh, Norway is now losing also as well. That's bad. The bright side is he has no melee units except for this uh, pike and shot, or she doesn't. So, as long as that pike and shot doesn't move up, he should be okay. Could he take Kristenland back? Probably not. He's kind of lacking troops right now. Ooh, no. Cap came out of nowhere and also just flipped. Dang, Norway. You had a chance. God, he was doing so well. I thought he had a chance. But he, I, I'm still, like, Wilhelmina, man, I'm almost rooting for her. With how slow she started, if she could pull this back, that would just be hilarious. She has a couple random cities now everywhere. So um, she could still put a couple more out. She needs to tank uh, Cahokia. If she could grab Cahokia, that changes the game. Or, I mean, that gives her another city here, which would be nice. Hey, I would like to click on Cahokia. Okay, maybe not. Cahokia. Harold is the suzerain, so technically she's at war with him. And then she still needs to get a couple of cities in here. She did lose that one city, though, to barbarians. Had she not lost that city, this might be a slightly different game. Uh, Babylon ended up falling over to Germany, but it looks like it's flipping to Australia, because nothing... Germany can't have any good thing right now, apparently. And Berlin's still slightly facing barbarians, but they're okay right now. Greece is slowly building, but they're running out of space, and Mali started taking over some of their territory. So, Mali might be safe. Mali might be safe. I don't think I don't think India is going to be able to see state emergency fail or well, we'll see. I don't think like I said India is going to be able to keep it up. I think they're going to end up falling behind. I think someone like Wilhelmina will pass them. That being said, I think Mali will be okay. Cuz I think they still have enough room over here. And they well, they both have their religion. I mean, technically Gandhi's ahead right now, but I just, I just don't see it. I mean, Gandhi still has a ton of wonders, though. That, and that's a good point. What's the yields here? Gandhi's at 73. Molly's at 107. So Molly has more culture. More than that, John Curtin's going to finish most of the wonders. I don't know there's too many wonders left in the game at this point. With as much as Australia's been building. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. But my prediction still, I don't think India is going to be able to make it into the top three. He is building Potato Palace. Uh, yeah, and that's it. Yeah, I think India is going to get knocked out. Or they won't be in the top three. That's my guess. I think Wilhelmina will slot in. I think it's going to be John Curtin, Molly, and Wilhelmina, if I had to guess at this point. Frederick, eh, I think he's too far behind at this point. Genghis Khan, as much as I hate to see him go because he's just so fun. Uh, by the way, let's see what happened. Can we see those other active effects? I think they both failed. Yeah, I think they both failed. But, I mean, Mongolia is always a fun sieve to have in the game just because they end up, they will always be at war with someone. So, anytime Mongolia is in the game, it's like, hey, at least we're going to have some wars. So, you ended up not pushing over in Kerma. Hey, Australia finally ended up bringing some troops. So, uh, if you weren't already eliminated, Nubia is pretty much out at this point. I think they're at peace. Nope, they're still at war. They're at war with Egypt, too. Sedingia is going to end up flipping over here, I think, to Egypt. Because Egypt's in a golden age, too, right? No, they're in a dark age. Eh? Nubia's in a normal age. Maybe not, but 10, 13, 14. That's going to be a lot of pressure there. Right now, it's still full loyalty, though, for Australia. Australia's got the golden age bonus, but if Egypt ever gets a golden age, it's going to flip. Does Egypt have a chance? Eh, she's pretty far behind. Yeah, just ending up losing some towns to Nubia just really screwed her there, even though she got it back. Also, what happened? Active effects, doesn't look like anything happened. All these emergencies slowly being spawned and then going away. So, are they still at war? I think so. Nope, they're peaced. So they ended up fighting, they killed some troops, and then they decided, you know what, let's go home. <laughs> yeah, typical, typical. Norway is going to get Oslo back, but Oslo? Oslo? Probably Oslo. Whatever. I know I'm butchering it. Australia's doing pretty okay. I, I'm i still slightly worried about potential loyalty here, but we shall see. He's building Golden Gate in Perth. And that's got to be connecting these two islands, right? Which would be pretty good. That would not be a terrible Golden Gate. Yeah, it's right there. Yeah, that'd be a pretty okay Golden Gate. 
I wonder why it's connecting to that one and not that one. Hmm, visual, I guess. Building a lot of spaceports. His sign still isn't that great, isn't it? 756, oops, 756. 309, eh, it's a little better. It's a little better. He's not gonna be able to win by 300, uh, but he will get close, I think. Now, an early victory by him would probably help Gandhi. And we can see Gandhi starting to fall behind. Molly passed him. Wilhelmina is slowly catching up. It's just like, he just doesn't have that much room left. And then, like, even this island over here got filled in. So there's not really a whole lot of spot for him. And this home island, there's just not a lot of spot either. Now, if he can keep getting some more wonders, that's great. Like the Potato Palace. But we can't even assume he's the only one building that at this point. Like, you gotta assume someone else is probably trying to build it. Then again, there's not a lot of mountains on this map. So maybe not. Maybe not. Like, Australia has no mountains, which is kind of crazy when you think about the fact that they have 300 signs. When there's literally not a single mountain range in their empire. Um, Germany has beaten back the barbarians, or at least they went home. <laughs> they were pissed off, they went and burned down a city, and they're like, you know what, let's go back and live in our tundra land. <laughs> oh, barbarians. Oh, barbarians. What are you even doing with your life, man? I feel like the barbarians should conquer a city and then create a new empire. I'm trying to think. I think that was Rise and Fall. Like the mod. It's not. It wasn't Rise and Fall. It was Rise. I don't know. We, we've talked about it in the past. But I'm pretty sure it was that mod. Where the Barbarians could actually create a new empire. Like that to me would just be absolutely amazing. That's kind of a little Age of Wonders. Because that can kind of happen with Age of Wonders. Where you can have these roaming bands. I think create a new empire. Don't quote me on that though. What else is happening over here? I need to go back and play some more Age of Wonders. I missed that game. That was fun. Yeah, Planetfall was pretty good. I enjoyed the older one, too. Uh, Alright, so you're shooting off. This is the first one, right? Yeah, that's our satellite. So that's not going to give you really any era score. You're just going to have some viewage. Some viewage. Uh, free city over here on Oslo. It should be flipping to Norway. Yes. Unless... Uh... Uh... uh pfft. Netherlands takes it back. Netherlands is not at war currently with Norway. So if it does flip over to Norway, then there's no way for her to take it right now. Only six turns. So she's running out of time there. Um, She's not necessarily catching up to Gandhi. They both went up about 10 points. And Gandhi looks like he's going to finish Potato Palace. So that's going to be a free 15 points. Is Netherlands... Yeah, you know what? She was catching up, but then she lost Oslo. Yeah. Mm, interesting. She's not building any wonders either. Okay. Interesting. Australia's about to throw down two towns over here. Man, maybe she's not going to be able to do it. Maybe she's not going to be able to catch up because she's starting to lose some of this territory that she should be settling in. She still has these three cities over here. So she still could potentially go over there. Uh, Cahokia and Lisbon, it looks like she doesn't care about either of them. Nazca is declared on by Greece, but still a little too late for Greece. I also think it's kind of weird for Greece to declare war on city-states, you know, considering Greece was made up by city-states. <laughs> you know, sure, whatever, whatever, whatever. But Pericles and Athens definitely shouldn't be declaring war on city-states, right? Gorgo? Maybe, maybe, because she's Sparta, so maybe. Stupa is being built over here. So then did India finish... Potato. They did finish Potato, so that's going to give them a little bit more of a boost. They actually passed Molly again now. So Wilhelmina's about 100 points down. Hmm, interesting. I, mm, I don't know. There's only 70 turns left. Maybe I shouldn't have been so hasty to count out uh, India. Now, the rather interesting point here would be if Norway is able to take my sore. I mean, if India is able to make it, having lost two of their cities, you got to give them credit for that. Seriously. That that would be pretty high praise if they're able to do it after losing two of their cities to Norway. And the fact that Norway, having taken two cities, wasn't able to get in there is kind of disappointing. So Australia is building Manhattan Project. They're still building rocket sites. They sh are shooting off the second rocket, but they still got a ways to go. And the other thing, keep in mind, he has no production. Now, he needs someone to declare war on him so he can get his nice little production boost. But I'm assuming he probably declared war. He's against Nubia, which, yeah, I think he started. And then Germany, which, no idea. Well, I guess they do share that one little island, don't they? Uh, where was it? Here. 
looks like Germany is going to try making a play. But the thing is, Bombards against 82 Garrison Defense Strength and most likely Steel. Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, Steel. Good luck with that. <laughs> and all he needs to do is send one... Uh, one nuclear sub down here to just wreck his life. Like, other than Vilnius, ugh, they're pretty low. He could also drop some nukes. That's one thing we really hadn't seen is we hadn't seen any nukes. I think part of it is 315 is maybe a tad bit early for nukes. You probably need to get to like 350 and stuff like that before you see any nukes being dropped. The other thing let's talk about, well, okay, I guess you can't do nuclear. Uh, I was going to say, he's not uh, popped out any giant death robots, but I think you need, yeah, you need all this to get giant death robots. So, it is still going to take a bit. What's his science at? 433. Okay, he's starting to cruise a little bit more. Enough to end? I still don't think he's going to be able to end, simply because uh, I just don't think he has enough production to be able to uh, knock out all these rockets before turn 300. But I will say, I'm impressed with Australia. He's had a couple really bad AI-only series, and Australia is one of the better civs in the game. So for him to be able to actually start balling, I'm good. I'm happy with that. So Germany got the Golden Age, then a lot of Normal Ages. Uh, well, a lot, some. Uh, Australia, Mali, uh, Mongolia, and Egypt, and then Dark Ages everywhere else. So, we then have Dark Ages over here, but I don't... Eh, Kristenland's flipping back, but really slowly. And then you guys had Dark Ages, but nothing major over there. Then these neighbors... It's like all our neighbors keep getting the exact same eras, <laughs> which is kind of really reducing the city flipping. Uh, Egypt did get a normal age, but I don't... Yeah, they'll be able to flip Australia. Yeah, we figured that was going to happen once he lost the Golden Age. Nubia got a Dark Age too. Do we think Greece would be able to flip this? Eh, it's going to be a normal age just the same, so probably not. And Germany doesn't really have any neighbors, so they're not going to be flipping anyone. And if Australia had a dark age, perhaps, but it doesn't look like it. Uh, what about... No uh, 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 you're losing that. Yeah, no, where's, uh, uh, Netherlands? What are we doing over here? No, nah, you're still okay. That was the only other thing I could see potentially flipping. And then you got a couple cities there, too. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's going to be a lot of loyalty flipping. Just a couple cities around. Kristenland, that one's still going to take forever. He is going for Mysore. India's pretty behind in tech right now. All right. Uh, Just skip, please. Yeah, they're really behind in tech. They're still rolling around with their Varu. They do have a cursed air core. 76 is pretty high, though. Uh, and those are medieval walls? Yeah, those are medieval walls. I don't think the field cannons are going to do enough damage to take it. I think he still needs a bombard to really take out the walls. It doesn't look like he's really interested in taking it either, though. Huh. Now, that would change the game. If he's able to take Mysore, man, I don't know if India can stay. I think Wilhelmina might be able to catch up. She's not too far behind again. She's only 50 points behind. Molly's starting to slip a little bit. But I still think Molly's going to probably be fine. The biggest thing, though, for Wilhelmina is she's starting to run out of time. It's starting to get pretty late. Now, keep in mind, Wilhelmina did so well. She made the Final Four last uh, championship series. She's done pretty good for herself every time we've done the AI-only series. So, I've been pretty impressed with her. So, I'm kind of rooting for her just to keep the rolling going. I think I would rather see her versus Gandhi. I mean, Gandhi is the champion. Well, okay, let's see. Hold up, pull up, pull up the uh, knockout rounds real quick. Um, Who are our past champions? Brazil, we know, made it. Mongolia is not going to make it, so that's one of them knocked out. And then it was Gandhi. This is our fourth one? I think this is our fourth one. So two of the three winners, if Gandhi makes it, will be in it. We'll still be in the knockout rounds. Okay, sure. Maybe from that standpoint, I should be rooting for Gandhi. I mean, Gandhi has the Varu, which, quite frankly, early game can just be so great. The problem with Gandhi is, like, 90% of the time he's super peaceful, and he's just not going to really accomplish much. Like, the knockout rounds are the perfect example, where he just literally didn't do anything for most of it. He just kind of had his little peaceful area, and then just fell behind. Mali, I think, honestly, is the worst. I don't know. I have India as one of the weakest civs in the game. It's just the Varu are, like, the best unit, but just the fact that you have to upgrade them to tanks. It's just so terrible. So terrible. Hong Kong got conquered by Mali. 
Yeah, I don't know. Wilhelmina's still catching up, man. Uh, and it looks like Molly might have a war going on. Now, what's interesting is whether or not Norway would join this war. Well, does that change the game? Eh, probably not. Probably not. What is Wilhelmina doing to catch up? She's still throwing down quite a few towns. If she could get an era better than Australia, she may be able to flip some stuff. But she's running out of time quick. She also has some tanks. If she could grab Stravanger, I think she holds on to it. Maybe. Maybe. She might need Stravanger and Oslo, Oslo to, to hold both. Yeah, and then she still needs some cities through here. She is building the crease, though. We saw that. And most likely, she will be able to finish that because I just don't think Australia has any hills. I don't think he has a single source of hills. So, yeah. All right. You're flipping over to Greece. That's what we kind of assumed was going to happen. Did we get our emergency war? Diplomacy victory. Uh, it failed. Okay. Uh, by the way, we should take a look at everything else. Religion. Gandhi's still doing pretty good in religion. That's maybe one of the main reasons he's uh, where he's at right now. Wilhelmina does have a religion as well, but she's only converted herself. She could do some flipping. That might help. Uh, no one's close in culture. Jean Curtin got the first two rockets, and that's usually where they end up stopping. The AI will get those first two rockets super early, and then you just never see rockets. I mean, honestly, the tech for the third one's pretty far down, so it's understandable that they don't get it right away. Australia is definitely safe, though. Uh, we need to wrap this episode up, don't we? Oh, man, we're going to be close. I don't really want to go. I, th I think we will just end this here. Yeah, I think we're just going to wrap it up, and we'll just have to autosave. So, anyways, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, drop a like, comment, let me know what you think. As always, hit the subscribe button, join the game, comment, and share your support. Next episode, we're going to finish this last group stage and see what happens. Till then, later, everybody.